Jumping in on Manx Radio with Howard and Chris Kane. Hello, good evening, and welcome. And here we are yet again, would you believe? (laughs) Where does the time go? It is Saturday night, 9 o'clock here on Manx Radio and lots of other places as well, which means, of course, it is jumping in the best in modern and contemporary jazz with myself, H. And me, Chris. Yes, welcome along to this week's show and congratulations to those of you who chose jazz over the Eurovision this evening. Or perhaps you're just taking a well-earned break. You can relax. The results won't be in for hours and Britain are, as usual, unlikely to win. However, today is also World Trade Day. World Bookfast Day, that's the Scottish Abbey produced caffeinated red wine known as Rick the Hoose Juice in Scotland. It's National Train Day, if you've got room in your timetable, National Windmill Day, National Belly Dancing Day, and of course, hurrah, hurrah. it's also National Dance Like a Chicken Day. So, what tunes have you been spinning, H, whilst wobbling like a jelly in the old chicken shack? <laughs> well, yeah, I used to like a bit of belly dancing, I must admit. Uh, I have got a uh, new soundtrack from Jeremy Pelt, a bit of a birthday boy. He's got a shift in the wind, and uh, I am going with a favourite. It's been on the player a bit of late. A last corner, out to dinner. Fantastic. And for me, well, we toy with the breeze, we fly till we drop, lose ourselves in a Carpathian forest, and to get our groove on, here's the Michael Leonard Orchestra with Shut Him Down. the week like Sunday service. Walk in it, world might be dark, but I'm in the right spirits. That voice of doubt don't gotta listen, although you hear it one time, that don't make it true. A thousand times to make your mind up and make it through. Swiss. Dream to pale, by the cunning and the cruel. The camera and projector, the running of the room. We're looking at the tailpiece, the spinning dog. Something once doesn't make it true to me or you or anyone in you. Shut him down, shut him down. Do you run him through? A hundred times you didn't, a thousand times you did. Thank you. 
Shut him down. Indeed, the opener from Michael Leonhardt's The Norman Suites. And uh, who is Michael Leonhardt? I hear you cry. Who is he? At 17, he was the youngest ever Grammy recipient. He has composed too many to count numerous film and game scores and worked with pretty much everybody. I mean, look him up, really, everybody. Lots of people in the pop world. He was a ranger, conductor and featured trumpet soloist on Steely Dan's Two Against Nature. And on this, his third orchestra album, there are three tracks with vocals written by Elvis Costello, who we heard singing there, The Norman Suites 1 and 2, which are dedicated to the late Norman, Michael's beloved Dachshund, made up of six movements each, and then two bonus tracks, one dedicated to Kenny Dorham and the other Wayne Shorter. And what a great brand. Michael on Leonhardt on trumpet uh, and on French horn and on trombone and accordion and on organ and guitar and bass and drums. I'm not really sure he needed to hire anybody else. On top of which, Danny McCuslin and Joshua Redman on tenor, Michael Blake on tenor and flute, Chris Potter on bass clarinet, Freddie Hendricks and Tony Kedlock on extra trumpets, Ryan Mason trombone, Ryan Kimbaley on bass trombone, Sarah Schoenbeck on bassoon, Bill Frizzell and Niels Klein on guitar, Larry Goldings on organ, Elvis Vilkello and Jay Swiss on rap, Joe Martin, Nathan Moshvan and Strickland on drums and percussion. And on that track, we heard a great solo from Joshua Redman on his Father Dewey's Restored Tenor. Thank you very much to Sunnyside for sending us that. Definitely worth a listen. Really interesting stuff. It is interesting stuff, and the fair old lineup he's got there going on, hasn't he? Amazing. He must have a lot of friends in the business. Yeah. I interviewed Dewey once years ago. Every time I hear his name, I feel ashamed that the one time I got to speak to him, I had a little bit too much wine, and I had to take all all my voice out of it and just leave Dewey's voice in. I thought, oh, he went to his grave thinking, who was that drunken guy from the Isle of Man? Uh, great shame. Uh, it is jumping in, uh, Chris and uh, myself, H, with you for the next hour or so. Um, speaking of some of the greats, uh, yes, we lost the great Gary Peacock uh, last year, sadly, at the age of 85. Uh, it would have been his birthday on the 12th, as I said, sadly, no longer with us. But it's sort of tied in roughly with, again, one of these things which we quite often mention from time to time. I was thinking about one of his albums a while back called Shift in the Wind. I thought, I hadn't heard it for ages. Went to play it, only to discover I didn't actually have it. I would have a cassette copy somewhere. It was mine. You um, had a copy. Of mine, I but I must have show, made a copy of the uh, of, last of the year. actual thing. But, yeah. Well, say recent last year. No, last yeah. year sometime. Uh, <laughs> and I thought, you know, I really want to hear it again, and I couldn't. So uh, yeah, I dug around, uh, found a copy online. Uh, I thought I may as well get CD actually, as it's the more <laughs> cat friendly. And uh, I've just been really enjoying it again, and uh, it's lasted really well. Forty years old, still sounds uh, fresh as paint. I would say Gary on bass, Art Lander piano, Elliot Zygmunt on the drums, and this is the opener called So Green.
Lovely stuff. Still sounds really nice and I think fresh. Hasn't really dated at all in many ways. So green. Art Landron piano. Gary Peacock, his album on the ECM back in 1980. Elliot Zygmunt on the drums, like I said. Lovely to get hold of a CD copy. Enjoy that in the last week on the CD player. And uh, it would have been Gary's, I think, 86th, but uh, sadly no longer with us. Happy birthday. Hopefully you're playing the bass somewhere else. On another plane, is all I can say. And uh, lots and lots of good music with Gary Peacock out there to go and explore if you're not familiar with him. Fantastic. And I like that album a lot as well. Uh, next for me, a great quintet from uh, pianist Misha Tsiganov. And uh, as you might guess, he is Russian. He's been living in New York for many, many years and like so many other musicians out of the country, is appalled by the situation. Nonetheless, his music's fantastic. Here's the title track from his 2018 release on Criss Cross Records, Playing With The Wind.
subconscious link there from Shift in the Wind to Playing with the Wind. Mm. Misha Tsiganov's Quintet, a great band. They're all uh, playing really well. Misha on piano, Alex Sipagan on trumpet. He's another favourite him, a bit like Jeremy Pelt. If you like his style of post-bop, you're not going to go wrong with any of his releases. Seamus Blake on tenor, Matt Brewer on the bass, and Dan Weiss on the drums. And if you enjoyed that one, check out his recently released Misha's Wishes, which came out this year. Same front line, but Boris Kozilov on the bass and Donald Edwards on the drums. Speaking of which, you're absolutely right, Jeremy Pelt, I've yet to hear, I have no idea off the top of my head how many albums he's got out under his own name, 20, 30, more maybe, a lot in any case. Only have a handful of them, realistically, but every one I've heard him play on, I've also thought, this is really good, there's never been a disappointing one. And uh, his latest, as far as I'm aware, he might have brought another one out, bearing in mind this one I've had a week or two, <laughs> he could have another two out by now, on the high note, it's called Soundtrack. It is indeed another cracker. Uh, this is the opener. Picking up the pieces. Bye. 
another winner as far as I'm concerned from Jeremy Pelt uh, I've just heard the album once or twice um, on high note soundtrack it's called that's called Picking Up the Pieces but so far I've been really enjoying it but as we say and we keep saying you know what Jeremy Pelt just seems to churn them out um, they always uh, at the very least are entertaining and often the sort of things that you reach for again and again to play wonderful stuff uh, if you're wondering about the title soundtrack as the uh, Michael J. West, the note writer, puts. He says, "If you're anything like me, you'd be flummoxed already by the recording. What soundtrack? Soundtrack to what?" He says, "It's a bit ironic. The title. It comes from the title of the second track, which in itself is 20 years old. Jeremy loves film scores. Uh, composing for Hollywood was the trumpeter's first ambition, which I didn't know when he first went to music school. But the music on the album doesn't correspond to any movie, movie or TV show or theatre production or even an abstract concept." Jeremy himself says, sometimes, you know, I just think the audience needs a breather. I've certainly done plenty of concept albums, but in this case, there's absolutely no concept. I'm, I'm on a soapbox about it. It's just been a tough time for all of us. So let's stop worrying about sending messages for a minute. Here we are, playing some songs and having fun. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit less uh, straight ahead, perhaps, than you know, but a, bit, a bit sort of... Um more commercial on that sounding from that track, is it? But it, but I mean, as you yeah, say, it's, smoother, it's, it's yeah. playing. You can't go wrong with this play. And uh, another one now, with same from me. The next one is another dose of post bop from uh, drummer Mike Clark, perhaps best known for his work with Headhunters uh, on Thrust and Manchild. Uh, he also took over Phil Collins' as seat in Brand X for Product and Do They Hurt. And he's been back on the road again with the Headhunters on all their recent releases post-Herbie. However, if you find yourself in the Bay Area of San Francisco, you might catch him playing with his quartet. From last year's album, Mike Drop, here's Barchet Fly. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hmm. Not just a funk drummer then. Mike Clark there with Barche Fly, dedicated to his bassist, Peter Barge, taken from last year's album, Mike Drop. Michael Zilmer on the tenor, lovely work, a great piano from Matt Clark, no relation, and Mike Clark at the drums. And thanks again to Sunnyside for sending us that one. It is most enjoyable, must admit. I'm going to try and dig that one out because, uh, yeah, really enjoyed that one indeed. This is Jane Ara Bloom, and you're listening to Jumping In with Chris and H on Manx Radio.
been enjoying that one very muchly as well. Came through in the last few weeks. Out to Dinner, Episodes of Grace, a re- really lovely sort of lineup, And it is um, part of the Episodes of Grace sort of series came together during the label's pandemic lockdown sessions and uh, has a sort of movable feast with the likes of uh, Ryan Keeble, saxophonist Patrick Cornelius, uh, Rudy Royston at the drums, very good indeed. And just before that, 1974, uh, the latest, or the f- one of the tracks from the latest album from the uh, Espen... Ericsson Trio featuring Andy Shepherd as well, a track called 1974. Well, that's about it for this week's show. We've just got time to fit in a track from one of my favourite Polish pianists, Pavel Kazmarczyk. He's usually heard with his audio-feeling trio, a band very much with its own unique identity, and here they are, joined by the Polish wind ensemble DJ Mr. Crime and percussionist Mino Chinilu. The album uh, is described, it's Kazmarczyk versus Paderewski. Tatra, which is described as a multidimensional combination of jazz, classical music, folk, and electronics inspired by Ignacy Jan Paderewski's Tatra album. Here's Forrest. Don't get lost in the woods. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>